I feel very bright. I don't know really what to do with my hair right now, but I feel like this is probably as good as I'm going to get the framing as I can. I'm going to keep my glasses on. You can see a little bit of reflection. I'm trying to light it a little bit. What can I even... I need to... What should I do with my hair? I should do something. January has been a pretty good month for me so far. I started the year off at some of Marissa's friend's place. They had a bouncy castle, so to say no more, everything else about that evening was awesome. <laughs> this is how I celebrate New Year. Great company, good countdown, I guess. Is there a good countdown anymore? The fireworks displays that we seem to be having up, like in London seem nothing compared to even just what Disneyland does on a regular evening. And yet people fork out so much money to go and stand in the cold at the end of December just so they can count down and go, a new year, a new me, I'm gonna be a totally different person, I'm gonna be losing weight, I'm gonna be so brilliant, I'm gonna be at the gym all the time, I'm gonna get that new job, I'm gonna travel so much more. And you're just sitting there going, did you wait until the end of December to actually make a change to your life? And are you going to make a change to your life or are you just using that as an opportunity to start again? Because you know you can quit your job anytime. If you give them enough notice, then maybe they'll actually leave you on like good terms. Everything's going to be... Digress. I digress. I'm doing this because I saw it in a talk video. <sighs> Still really hot. I've seen a whole bunch of films this year so far. I renewed my Cineworld card, which means that I get to go and see films whenever I like for as often as I like. I pay that one-off fee, everything's great, everything's brilliant, and that is one of my favourite things to do at the beginning of the year when I've still got the money, I do that so that when I'm broke later on in the year or when everything else is kind of like stressful or when the summer blockbusters come out or anything like that, I can go and see them. It also means that films that I'm not such a big fan of, I end up going and seeing anyway because I don't feel like I'm losing anything apart from a few hours of my time which I would probably be spending doing something else like sitting at my laptop or setting up this light for the 15th time with no real intention of filming anything. So that's always been fun. As a result of that I've already seen The Theory of Everything twice and pretty much just bawled my eyes out every time. The second time I saw it I only actually watched for about half an hour, 45 minutes because I had to be somewhere else later on in the evening and I had a bit of spare time between two things. But even in those few moments, ah, oh, Redmayne is fantastic. He's so convincing and so good. Like the way he conveys pride just with the movement of an eyebrow is insane. I don't like, it's just like the best acting I've probably, I think it's the best film I've, I think it's the best film I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of films. That's not to say that other films weren't more entertaining or didn't have different things that you want to invest in, but from the very beginning I was invested in Stephen and Jane's relationship. From the very early movements and the subtleties of his character you could see that there was a problem that was growing and it was going to have some effects on their life. You could see things as they were like building up, but down to the very like minute tiniest of details, just like a slight hunch or the tiniest of tingling in the fingers. Oh, he just, everything about it was so just brilliantly done. I saw Into the Woods and I wasn't actually a big fan of it. I knew it was a musical. I'd seen some beautiful videos by people such as Dan and Gary and, and everyone else that was part of that meet Anna Kendrick thing, which I'm not bitter about. I just think that we would have probably got on better than Dan and her did, so whatever, whatever, it's fine, it's it's okay, it's it, it's what it is, we got to deal with that. But I, I didn't actually think the film was all that great. There were moments of it that were fun, but they seemed to rush and cut through certain parts, there were some details that they would spend ages building up to, and some that they would conclude in just like a snap and you wouldn't... It just felt like they didn't know what their pacing was meant to be and apparently they've cut stuff out of the musical theatrical kind of version so that they've actually yeah they've made it shorter in places without keeping or maintaining that bit of story so that helps to make it a little bit less understandable. Meryl Streep and Emily Blunt are brilliant in it. James Corden's even an enjoyable character. I don't even hate on, I don't hate on any of the characters and I don't think that the songs are particularly bad, it just feels like it goes on for 
far too long for me. It feels like it's not quite ready for that. And on a similar note, I saw Birdman, which was one of the most exhausting films that I've watched in a while. It's a brilliant film, it's got this whole one take vibe and it's very like, it's so well put together and it's so well shot. There are a few sort of inconsistencies here and there, but the entire approach to it looks brilliant and apparently they were shooting like 15 pages of script at a time and they would have to make sure that everything that they did was spot on or they would start it again. You'd have to be meeting your marks as though you were actually performing it as a theatrical piece. And that was brilliant and I loved the way that Keaton was doing his thing. Zach Galifianakis was really, really awesome in there as well. Everyone was just really strong characters. Ed Norton was mental. Like, he's just a nutter. But it was just exhausting for me to watch as a cameraman because thinking of some of these long, long shots and how he would have had to have rehearsed and walked and carried and maintained both the sharpness of the image and like the steadiness and the positioning and everything over these really long scenes. I just, I was watching the whole film just like, damn, I would be knackered after this. This is like, this is just exhausting. And because of the whole style and the feel of it being like one long continuous shot, I didn't get times for my emotions to sort of relax at the end of a day and start afresh for the next day as the characters go about what they're doing. It just felt like it was one constant, high-paced, intense piece. And on that note, I want to go and see Whiplash because that looks similar kind of intensity and that looks fantastic. And I've only heard really, really good things about that from people like Ollie and the rest of them that know what they're talking about. So I need to go and see that. I've watched far too much Office lately. I've probably gone through about five or six seasons and it's one of the things that Lily and I like to talk about when we're doing our work together and that Marissa and I like to watch when we wake up in the morning. It's just a nice, relaxing, silly bit of humour. And it's, it's good. I started watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine. That's awesome as well. Last week, YouTube and NBC invited a whole bunch of creators along to the NBC studios, which are downstairs at the Google building, to watch a private screening of Ex Machina and then do a Q&A session with Alex Garland afterwards. This was a great opportunity, if nothing else, because I absolutely love the film Dread. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's so silly and explosive and brilliantly. Just, it takes Judge Dread to a newer feel and it's kind of like a slightly more cartoony version of The Raid. And The Raid is great. So, getting to meet him was going to be cool. But getting to see the film Ex Machina early was going to be cooler because I wanted to see that anyway, I hadn't got my Cineworld card yet, I was basically just quite excited for that opportunity. I didn't know who was going to be along there either and when I turned up and I got to see so many of my friends that I hadn't seen for quite a bit of January, you know, ecstatic. People like Ray and Louie and Mike and, you know, Ella, Luke Spillan, Kezia, oh, so many happy faces that I love. Tomek was there with his fuzzy face, you just want to, ooh, you want to... Lots of people that I like. So we got to watch the film, and I think that the film is great, but I think that they should have given us a slight trigger warning because there is self-harm at one point in it. Besides that, though, it's a thought-provoking piece. It has you constantly, like, wondering who or what is the, uh, who's the bad guy, or if any of them are the bad guy. It's beautifully shot. It's set in this gorgeously contained sort of wonderful madman house in the middle of this huge Jurassic Park-esque foresty area and the theme tune is kind of like Jurassic Park apart from every now and again the score goes oh we're not allowed to do that let's uh, change something so like kind of thing. you know they suddenly realize that they're breaking some kind of rules that they shouldn't be and they've got to go in a different direction Anyway, that film is awesome and I will probably be doing another video about that shortly. If nothing else, I will link you to friends that have done videos about it because I know that both Ray and Neefsi got to do a one-to-one -one interview with him and they're going to be awesome. I've been filming with a guy called Dan Whitehouse who makes brilliant music. Stuff that really reminds me of Fleetwood Mac and that kind of style and if you know me, you know that I love Fleetwood Mac. So being in the studio whilst they're working these bits out and they're laying in the drums or they're putting down some keys or 
like a guitar solo that's ripping through it. I got to go along and uh, see Beth and Dodie and Helen performing at the Islington Academy at a really, really busy night. That was awesome. They were great. Everyone was having a great time there as well. I think that it was mainly people taking photos of Evan Edinger, but you know, why not? He's doing really well for himself. He's actually just made a really good video that I watched this morning, and I will recommend that somewhere down there as well for you to go and have a look at it because it's a sensible, well put together thing and you don't have any of his puns to deal with. As far as I can tell, he might have snuck one in there, but I can't quite be sure. I feel like I've just watched so many things lately though. So many things, and it's pretty good for me to be doing that again because it reminds me what things that I like and dislike about the things that I do, what I want to be getting involved more in and trying to make. A lot of people at the moment in January I've seen are talking about the fact they want to make their short films. I would love to be working on short films. I'd love to be working on content that is longer than these small pieces. So bring me in, get me involved, see what I can do. I would love that opportunity. Um, January has just been one of those months. I've been trying to make these smaller videos that I'd filmed little bits and pieces of over the last like month that just, they don't feel right or ready yet. So I'm gonna leave those to stew, maybe come back and have a look at them and see what I think and maybe, maybe I'll like it. I've been listening a bunch to uh, my friend Bing's album, Progress. That's pretty cool, I'll put a link to that down below as well. He's got physical versions of it now and the artwork is great. And it's got songs by lots and lots of different people that I'm friends with. So I'm invested in it emotionally, if nothing else. Um, what else is happening? On Wednesday, my friend Ledger is playing a show at the Jazz Cafe in London. She is great. I've done so much work for her over the years and we have a very, very good friendship and I can't wait to see her perform. It's also got Becky CJ on the lineup and Lee Broderick and if that's not reason enough for you to want to come along, I don't know what is. I really don't know what is. But what have you guys been doing this month? What have you been up to? Who have you been watching? What kind of films have been going on? that you think I really need to see. Because now that I've got this card, I want to go and watch everything all over again. I want to spend days and days and days just sitting there, eating snacks, getting fat, and all of that. Also, last night I watched the Royal Rumble, but I don't want to make any spoilers for that because some of you will still be watching. Suffice to say, I had a great evening and I managed to convince my girlfriend to watch the whole thing as well. So basically, I'm in the best relationship I've been in in so long and everything that's going on is really good. You should be happy for me because I'm happy for me and that's, that's enough, isn't it? Thank you for staying around. Love you, I'll talk to you soon. If you've liked this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you wanna to subscribe to my channel, to my channel, to my channel, why not? You can do that. I do videos about basically everything and anything. If you have any questions or you wanna just chat or you wanna like take part in any of the photography related things that I do at the moment, we should do that. And if you want to learn more about photography in general, especially if you want to take photos of big products, my friend Sean Tucker is doing this great series over on his channel and I will link to that in the down as well, because that is really worth your time. He is doing some stuff that will really help you if you are doing photography as a full-time thing. Okay, um, peace. Bam. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba